Hey guys, what's going on? Pretty obvious what's going on. Christmas trees up. Uh, it's that time of year. Got my merry fracking Christmas shirt on. Got this. I'm ready to go. Got some Mississippi Fred McDowell going on in the background. I don't play no rock and roll is the album. It's on vinyl. It's old. It's a little scratchy, but it's perfect. Um, what do I want to do today? Oh, first. First, I need to let you know, this right here doesn't just happen by itself. It takes a lot of work, so, yeah. Nice try, metric hater and deck screw hater. This came to my door. It's from you. I know what you're trying to do. I'm not touching this stuff. Okay, this episode is called Two Jacks for a reason because I put two jacks on my guitar. You see that? Now, um... I keep getting questions like, why don't you just put one jack um, and you can still use your piezo and your coil um, and use a three-way switch or something else. Well, I do this on purpose because, well, let's start with this guitar. This guitar, uh, you've seen it before, it was played by Bob Log um, at the Surf Rodeo in Ventura a couple years ago. He played it on stage. Uh, but it's about a 1954 Airline Montgomery Wards guitar made by Kay or Harmony or somebody. And you used to buy these at Christmas to drive. Uh, you'd give one to your nephew and, and to drive your brother or sister crazy is what you would do with it. But anyway, I got this one out of Arkansas a couple years ago. And it was pretty good. It's in pretty good shape. And, uh, the neck isn't busted loose, so the action is good. But um, I put a couple pickups in it. And um, the idea here is, is that you can, um, with the, let's fire this thing up. I got two uh, amps over here, a couple Fender amps. And let's start off with the piezo. So I can turn the piezo up. piezo sound and it picks up anything you want right um, and then I got this coils gold foil coil and um, so the good thing about this I got two amps I can pick a really old tube amp I can pick a any different kind of amp and I can control the volume and I got two sets of um, sounds I can get so I've always liked this setup and you can tune it um, as you go uh, get both of them going so anyway if you want to blame somebody for me doing this um, blame Bob Log the third because the first guitar I ever built him I said what kind of pickup you want and he told me I like two pickups with two separate jacks so anyway I'm gonna listen to Fred McDowell and enjoy the Christmas tree and, and do a little bit of that um, but you know that white owl box I'm working on the vintage one let's see what we're doing with that so we'll hit the bench after you give me a like and a subscribe remember if you subscribe you'll get a notification when my videos are coming out. So let's hit the bench. Let's catch up on this uh, White Owl Vintage Box. I've got the nut on. I have cut in the grooves using this fancy template thing that we made. Remember that? Okay. And that's going to come in handy for me as well right down here when I lay the strings out because I've put a piece of tape on and marked the fret. So if these are offset a little bit, I can still get my string uh, grooves in the floating bridge right. So that's where we're at. We're going to take off the deck screws. Yeah, deck screw hater, man. You opened up a can of worms, son. Let's get these off of here. All right, last one off. Let's open this up. Now, you remember... Um, the last couple episodes I told you that I was going to put two different jacks here and so when I beefed up the box um, I put 
these pillar blocks up at the front turn this way but back here I had to put them in this way so they would accept the jack so there's going to be a jack running here it's going to run to this coil right here I've got the wires run down here and I've got the volume pots right here I'm going to take these off bend these over uh, and then solder everything up. I'll show you where the connections go when I'm all done and kind of touch up on that. I've done an episode called wiring a coil. I also did one called wiring a piezo and I'll give you uh, the eye that pops up there throughout the videos. You can either go to it in the middle and miss out all this exciting stuff I have especially in this episode or at the end you can click them and it'll show you uh, the episode I'm talking about about wiring up a coil and then wiring up a piezo but one of the tricks I want to tell you about is I don't put the jack in and then try to solder down in there because that's a nightmare probably like like to start the house on fire but anyway I take this out I run my two wires through here and of course they're still attached to the spool I like this pushback wire especially for the hot wire now see this jack it's got a shorter uh, connection and a taller one the taller one goes to the ground which is black and the shorter one goes to the hot wire which is white now, one of the things I want to tell you about is I always use shrink wrap when I put the wires on here. So I'll get the wires on here and I'll push a piece of shrink wrap. Let's try to do that right now. I cut a couple pieces so I don't forget. Push a black one up and then I've got some of this in different colors. So on the black one, which is the ground, I will take this piece of shrink wrap and push it up here out of the way and then the blue one I can also use red shrink wrap or whatever I slide those out of the way then I will put the connections here solder them and then once they're done this fits see how smooth this fits right over that and then I can shrink wrap it and these will never cross up and I crimp these down but I'm gonna run um, two of these jacks in uh, wires go out first and I'm going to end up with two of these one here and one here okay guys now what I've done is remember I've got the two full spools of wire I've got the wires run through here I've got my shrink wrap right there ready to go and I've got a little bit of wire bent over that connection now this is clean Anyway, I'm just going to put this here. We're going to heat this up like so. And I'm going to put a little solder there. I don't think that's really exciting for you to see. But bingo, there we go. Okay, I want to show you something real quick. Notice that I've run the wires through the holes. I've got the piece of shrink wrap with the right color on the respective ones. Notice I don't have the shrink wrap up too close because while you're heating this, to make the soldering connection if it's too close it'll melt and then all of a sudden your shrink wrap won't fit over anything so I put this heated it up put it on there I'm not going to bother you with that but the last thing you need to know is if that turns a dull color you've got a cold joint and then while I'm here every time I make a connection a major connection I'm going to wipe that off and then use my sponge and you see how everything turns nice and shiny again that's what you want so I'm going to solder this up both sides and get these in and then of course I'll put the screws in and make those solid and then make my inside connections okay I've got the hot wire soldered up take my trusty rusty pelican match and I'm going to put the shrink wrap on there like so and get that out of the way and then it'll be time put my ground on right there
Okay guys, I've got them both wired up, got plenty of room. Uh, wound them up so I don't get confused on the two separate ones. Got a hot in the ground. I'm gonna take this, take this little bit, and screw these holes in here. And you want to remember that I have those pillar blocks behind right here to hold these in um, because uh, this box right here I wouldn't even try to put screws in there and expect it to hold it's a it's an old box but remember we spend a lot of time beefing this up so I'm gonna do this one put the screws in and show you what it looks like all right there we go uh, got both of them screwed in they're nice and solid again because we have these blocks here nothing's gonna happen there or there now we got these wires hanging out. Get some of this crap out of the way here. There we go. We're going to set that down now. Each one of these is going to be wired to these volume pots here. And I'm going to take these out to do the wiring. But let me show you. Um, there's a hot wire coming off the piezo. There's a hot wire and a ground wire coming off this coil through here. So real quick, again, I've shown you this and how to wire a piezo and a coil. Now these are relatively small, so I'm going to show you on this little bigger one here. This is the one I use with Camacho boxes because they're thick. This one, I've got not too much room on the top here. Somebody's going to be strumming in here or whatever. But the way these wire up is regardless if you have a coil or a piezo, if you turn it this way, turn it over, this one right here is going to connect to the hot wire off your coil or piezo. This one is going to connect to the hot wire off of your jack. This one here is going to connect back to itself to the bottom of the pot to ground everything. And then, of course, your ground wires to your piezo and coil are going to come off of here and then not on the piezo but on the coil you're going to have to ground this to get the strings grounded and I put this wire here connected to the tape which goes to the strings down to the tension pins that are down here that's in the grounding episode tape comes out here I've got a piece of Altoid box right there this is soldered underneath so this is your ground wire that one will go to the pot for the coil so one more time hot wire coil hot or piezo hot wire jack ground ground jump wires to here and then goes to all your other grounds easy money okay last thing I want to show you remember the volume pots are on this side so running this one to here I always want to remember think ahead see them gaps down there on that wood that's um, reinforcing the box and the neck and everything that the screws go into those little gaps right there are for everything to jump underneath here and wire up over here so always think ahead my piezo wires are going to go under there um, my jack wire for the piezo is going to go under there, so it's important that you think ahead. Okay, guys, remember this side was a piezo. I have it hooked up inside, and before I put any strings on it, anything that you do to the box, it picks up. So it'll pick up the strings, but again, like if you buck a white, you're tapping the box. Or, Doing a little Mississippi Fred McDowell playing with Eli Green on Bulldog Blues. You can, you can hear him doing this stuff. So that's why I do that part. It brings back an old rustic sound. And you can control the volume. You can crank it all the way up. Turn it down or whatever you want to do. It's completely separate from this coil. And you can hook it up to the same amp or a different one. So I'm going to get on hooking this up now. And then we'll get some strings on it and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, now we're going to wire this up to this. A couple of things I want to get out of the way real quick is, see my Bumble pajamas? Yeah, you don't covet those. Those are mine. Um, next, always have that shrink wrap around. We're going to be putting that on the connections to make sure everything's protected. 
you don't want something short now later and I've told you this a hundred times but you got to have that file ready on that soldering iron and the sponge to keep the tip clean now we're opening this up you can see this potentiometer the blue one I always use red or blue for the hot coil and uh, a duller color for the piezo anyway um, this is the, the wire coming off of the coil that's through the, the top now there is a, a piece of wrapped wire in here and some ground wire so I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to pull this off very careful because this is shielded you see that now sometimes people make a mistake here when you've got this loose ground wire like this if you miss a piece of that and it's over here and touching other things it's going to mess you up so always take the time to wind that up very carefully like that make sure that there's nothing there and then I'm going to cut just the tip of this off skin this back right here you can see that shielded and there's a bit of wire sticking out there I'm going to take a piece of my I hope I'm in the camera here for you I'm going to take a piece of this a short piece because if you look here this tab right here isn't that big but I'm going to make sure that I put this on here and slide it down before I solder everything together that way when I put this again the coil is going to go on up oh, drop my pencil and disappearing here I am again um, this is going to go here the hot wire from the jack is going to go here and then this is going to ground back to itself here and of course all the grounds go there so I'm going to solder this onto here first now I, you see these are bent up I bent this one down a little bit and then I bent that wire like that I'm just going to pull that up into there like so and then I can bend it over and that makes it very easy for me to solder see it's just laid down like that put a little piece of weight back here like so and then I'm just going to touch my soldering tip and my solder to right there and it'll be fine again I don't want the shrink wrap too close because if it hits picks up the heat it's going to melt and then I'm not going to be able to slide it over there all right I've let that cool just a tad now I'm wrapping that shrink wrap up there now if you're using these old matchbooks like I get so I can use them for the neck every once in a while the striker goes out so I got a new improved striker that's really what soldering irons for soldering is just a secondary benefit I don't want to catch everything on fire but there we go it's melted down the shrink wrap is there I can bend that down a little bit I don't want to do this um, too many times but I've already got the hot wire coming off of the jack right there I've got it peeled back and notice I've got that piece of shrink wrap here I'm gonna slide it all the way down because again if it gets hot it will melt and then I can't use it so I just put that there bend it over like so and these kind of stay out of each other's way if you go down the pathway so again I am going to take solder this to here slide the shrink wrap up and then we'll work on the ground okay now the final connection here is this end one so um, again coil hot wire jack hot wire and then this is a ground so this is going to have to jump from here so we just put a jumper wire here now I want to remind you that there is a wire coming off of a mount where this tape on the neck to the strings to the ground bone is connected to the string bone and all that kind of thing that's got to go on the back of here as well as the negative from the jack as well as the negative from the coil so trying to put all that on there on the back of this little 
um, compact potentiometer is not too good. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to peel this back a little bit. And that's got to be very short. Now I'm not going to put any shrink wrap on here uh, because it's just ground. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut this and I'm going to pull that up. And you see I've bared that a little bit. What's going to happen is I'm going to put this here like so. And then I'm going to ground this to the back of the potentiometer. And then all my other wires, I'm going to come up here and strip this off. And I've got a piece of wire that now all of these other ones can come to. And then I can use a bigger piece of shrink wrap to get all those together. So I'm going to do that kind of show you what it looks like. All right, we have all the grounds come together off that tab now. Um, and I'm just going to cut the end off like that. I'll be four pieces of metal forever. I'm just going to lay that flat now and put a little bit of solder there to bind everything up. There go. This doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to work. All right, there, everything is shrink wrapped and all that. I'm going to take a little piece of this green wire, cut it in half, and I'm going to take these and kind of bind them up by wrapping these little sections of wire around this. So when I got to tuck them down in the box, everything works out okay. I'm going to do that on both sides. Everything is sealed up nice with the shrink wrap and insulated and stuff, so I don't have to worry about this. Again, I do like the bigger um, volume potentiometers, but there's not that much room here. So everything, I'm going to line all these up because the screw's got to go back in it. And before I seal it up, make sure everything's okay, out of the way, not touching each other. And now we're going to be able to put our bridge back on and take our handy dandy string guide remember that we've got our marks here from here so when I put my strings on up at the knot I know I put marks here and then I can line up everything cut my notches with my small file in the bridge and then we'll see what this sounds like at the end so let me get that done and I'll catch up with you So, uh, what do you think now? Do you um, do you understand why I do this? Um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's virtually about the same amount of wiring. It's pretty simple, real versatile. Um, you could even play uh, based on the venue, and you only got one amp. You could make your sound what you want. But anyway. Um, that white owl box is going to go somewhere very interesting in about a week and a half. So during Christmas vacation, I'm going to head up somewhere to an old Baptist church somewhere, and I'm going to film that. And I think you're going to you're going to like that. And then we'll get that uh, that white owl box off to the artist finally. So um, Tammy's sitting here. Hi, Tammy. And um, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I appreciate you watching my channel and. Um, you know what? Get off that extra $2.49 it takes to put one of these in here, okay?